Greetings third grade Eagles, this is Mrs. Swart and I am coming to you with an instructional video on the week of April the 6th ELA instructional pack packet from the district, excuse me. So this packet we're going to be focusing on the following standards and skills. Asking and answering questions about a story. Our learning standard for this packet or this skill is 3.rl.kid.1. Ask and answer questions to demonstrate understanding of a text, referring explicitly to the text as the basis for the answer. Let's do our no show how. What is it that you need to know from this standard in order to show mastery? You need to know what is the text. In this case, our text is a story. You also need to know what are answers. Answers are the responses that you give to the questions that are being asked. You show me that you understand by asking questions about the text. Answering questions about the text. Showing or demonstrating that you understand the text by asking and answering questions about it and referring explicitly back to the text. And basically referring explicitly means going back to the text to find your answers. I know that you understand. I will know that you understand by doing the following. I'm going to ask you at the end to do an exit ticket using Class Dojo. Our learning target is I can ask and answer questions about a text. When I ask a question, I'm basically using who, what, when, where, why, or how to ask my questions. When I answer a question, that's basically me giving a response to that question. And again, text in this case is going to be our story. Now, let's go back to the packet. I want us to take a look at the packet. Our packet is from the district packet. It is lesson five asking and answering questions about stories. Stories are made up of characters, settings, and events. A character is a person or animal. A setting is where and when a story takes place. An event is something that happens in a story. When reading, you ask questions about the characters, the setting, and the events that are taking place. You can also answer questions about those same things. When you answer a question about a story, you support your answer with details from the text. That's called referring explicitly back to the text to find your answer. This will show that you understand the story, which is part of our no show how. Let's take a look at this piece of story. It doesn't have a title, but we, will, we do see a picture of a girl who is our character. And as I read the story, I want you to think about what questions can I ask about what's happening in this story that the story may give me answers to? When I look at this picture, I see the little girl and it looks like she's writing. So a question that I can ask before reading the story is, what is she writing? As I read the story, I'm going to look for those answer in the story. The story may give me the answer and then it may not give me the answer, but it gets me in the practice of asking questions about the story. Erica was doing her homework. Her pencil rolled off the desk and under the bed. She was peering under the bed looking for it when she spotted an old wooden box she had never seen before. I'll stop right there and ask the question, an old wooden box, where did the wooden box come from? That's asking a story, asking a question while you're reading the text. You can ask questions before, during, and after. How did that get there, she asked herself. When Erica opened it, she saw gold coins glittering in the dim light. A question I would ask here is, what does the word glittering mean? Wow, she said, I think it's a treasure chest. Now, now that I finished reading the text, I can ask myself questions about the text based on what I've already read, and I can also see if the text answered the question that I asked at the beginning, which was what was Erica or what was the girl writing? And it said at the very beginning, the very first sentence, me referring back to my text, said Erica was doing her homework. So now I know the answer to that. Erica was doing her homework. 
another question that I asked was about the old wooden box. It didn't give me any information about the old wooden box, what it was or anything. It just told me that um, when she opened it, she saw gold coins. So Erica is thinking that it is a treasure chest. The last question that I asked was about the word glittering. I can use the content around the story to try to find out what the word glittering means, or I can go to a dictionary or a glossary and look up the word glittering and to figure out what it means. And I think that glittering in this case has to do with gold coins. And I know that gold coins, when you see gold coins, they're usually shining. So I think glittering means shining. Now let's look at page 79. Think, you've learned about why it's important to ask and answer questions as you read. Now look at the chart. Finish the chart to show how the questions can be answered with details from the story. So now, they've given us two questions. Question number one, what does Erica find under the bed? Next to question number one, we're going to provide the detail from the story that supports this answer. What does Erica find under the bed? And then we're going to write in our own words, what is the answer? Question number two, why does Erica think she has found a treasure chest? We're going to find details from the story that helps to answer this question. And then where it says answer, we're going to write the answer in our own words. So let's go back to question number one. What does Erica find under the bed? When I go back to the story, it says she was peering under the bed looking for it, meaning her pencil, when she spotted an old wooden box she had never seen before. That is the detail sentence that I would write here in story details. And in my own words, I would say Erica found an old wooden box under the bed. Now I'm going to stop there because I want you to go back and I want you to answer the question, why does Erica think, <clears throat> excuse me, she has found a treasure chest? I want you to find the story details to support that answer and then to write the answer in your own words on the chart. Once you've done that, I want you to Look at the talk session, section. Which question had an answer in the text and which one did you have to think about more? Explain how you figured out each answer in the chart. If you have someone that you can go to and talk to about that, I want you to go and share this question with them and answer this question. As you're talking to them, make sure to use the words character, setting, and event in your answer. If you don't, just think about it to yourself. We would often talk about think aloud. So you can think aloud about this answer on your own. Now this brings us to the end of this instructional video. Before we end this video, let's do a quick wrap up. Now what I want you to do with this wrap up is think about this question. Do you feel that you're able to ask and answer questions about a text and refer back to the text to support your answer? If you say yes, no problem, Ms. Word, I understand this, take a picture of yourself doing thumbs up and post it in Class Dojo. If you say no, Ms. Word, I don't quite get it yet, take a picture of yourself doing thumbs down and post it in Class Dojo. If you feel like, I think I have it, Ms. Word, but I need a little bit more help, take a picture of yourself doing your thumbs to the side and post it in Class Dojo. Last, here we are, our Class Dojo exit ticket. It is a Part A and a Part B. Guys, I'm so excited to see your responses from this. Part A question, remember Part B and Part A both support each other and they both have to be correct, okay? Why was Erica peering under the bed? A, she was cleaning up her room. B, she heard a strange sound. C, her pencil rolled under the bed. Or D, her dog was hiding under the bed. Now, part B, which sentence from the story best supports your answer to part A? Remember, you're going to go back to part A. Whatever answer you chose from part A, that answer has to be supported with part B. A, when Erica opened it, she saw gold coins. B, her pencil rolled off the desk. 
and see Erica was doing her homework. Now, whatever answer you choose for part A and part B, I want you to type that into a message for me in Class Dojo. And um, look for part two of this video, video by Miss Farnsworth. She's going to come to you with part two of this video. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.